So we have a solid sphere, which is rolling down an incline. It is rolling without slipping while going down the incline. We're going to say the initial velocity of the object is equal to zero. We know the moment of inertia about the center of mass of a solid sphere is 2 fifths m r squared. And we're trying to figure out the acceleration of the center of mass of this object. So it's on an incline, which has an angle of theta. It starts up here at some initial position. It's going to end down here at some final position. We're trying to figure out the acceleration down the incline. Down the incline. Okay, now, is there a force of light? No. Is there a force of friction? Yes. Yes, there's going to be a force of friction that is going to cause this object to rotate. However, is does the object slide? No. So is there any energy lost due to friction? Yeah. No. So is energy conserved? Yes. Yes. So notice in this particular case, there, okay, I'll say it again. I know, I, I hear the excitement. We have friction. Friction is going to cause this object to rotate down the hill. However, we don't have sliding. And it's when you have sliding that you have energy transferred from, uh, you have kinetic energy converted into internal energy of the system. And that is why energy is not conserved. But energy is conserved because you only have rolling without slipping. There isn't any sliding, which is going to cause the object to increase in temperature. So we don't have a loss of, or a, a conversion of energy from kinetic energy into internal energy. Moment. So if you just roll without dragging, it generates heat. Uh, it, in this physics world that we live in, with the in the vacuum that you can breathe, yes. Truth is, it well, I mean, it does deform the object. So yes, in, in truth, it does. But we're assuming that this is a rigid object that's not going to change shape as it's rolling, which is not actually correct. But it's close. Right. So we have then conservation of energy, mechanical energy initial equals mechanical energy final. Please walk us through conservation of energy, Tim. Put the zero line at the final point. That's a good idea. Yeah. And uh, so for initial, there's gravitational. So G. Well, I'm just going to put M G H initial at this point. So we have gravitational potential energy. Gravitational potential energy. What about a spring? Do we have a spring? No spring. What about kinetic energy initial? Teachers and students, please start the interruption. With the drum line, please report to the band room at this time. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Mechanical energy final. What do we end with, Tim? Keep going. Uh, there's no gravitational potential. Sure. There's kinetic Okay. So I have kinetic energy final squared. And is there kinetic rotational energy? Is the object rotating at the bottom? Sure. Yes. Sure. <laughs> it is. Therefore, we also have rotational kinetic energy, one half i omega squared. So, uh, let's see, mgh, I don't know, help me, what should we do, Travis? That's a good question. Thank you. <laughs> Very proud. I'm not sure. Work from left to right, just start with mass, we don't know anything about that, g, I don't know anything about that. What about height energy? Ah, it's a bummer. Okay, so we'll be all the way through three. I don't know, anybody have any ideas for any one of those? Eric? Can we put our uh, moment of inertia equation? Okay, we'll start on the right here. We have a, an equation for moment of inertia, plus one half times two fifths m r squared omega squared. So we'll just work with that. m g h initial, one half m v final squared. Everyone brought mass to the party, here we go. <laughs> Oh, it's too cold. Yeah. I'm not going to start it over. Alright, so here we go. Mass cancels. We get GHI equals, uh, let's see, velocity final squared over 2 plus 1 fifth R squared omega squared. Other thoughts? Tip. Uh, 
We know the velocity of the center of mass equals r times omega squared. Therefore, the velocity of the center of mass squared equals the radius squared times omega squared. And the velocity of the center of mass is the same thing as velocity final squared. So we can replace velocity or r times r squared times omega squared with velocity final squared. So we have uh, one half plus one fifth is going to be. Oh, I guess I'll do it in two steps. Uh, one half, so we have five tenths plus two tenths times velocity final squared equals so seven tenths velocity final squared. We still have g height initial on the left hand side. Tip. We gotta use trig, but the problem is we don't really have a triangle yet. So let's let's identify some signs here. We know that this is height initial, we know that this is theta. Let's just identify this as the displacement in the parallel direction. We don't have any, don't really have anything for that at the moment, but we could substitute that in, and that seems a little bit more logical than the height initial. So sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse, where the opposite is the height initial, and the hypotenuse is the delta d parallel, in other words, the displacement in the parallel direction. So the height initial equals the displacement in the parallel direction times the sine of theta. So we get g times delta d parallel times the sine of theta equals 7 tenths velocity final squared. In other words, velocity final squared equals 10 over 7 times g times the displacement in the parallel direction times the sine of theta. Remind me, what are we trying to find, Hillary? Acceleration, we found velocity final squared. Uh, we don't need to take the derivative, there's a much, much easier route. UAM. We know velocity final squared equals velocity initial squared plus 2 times the acceleration times the displacement of the parallel direction. So the velocity final in the parallel direction equals velocity initial in the parallel direction. The acceleration in the parallel direction as well. So the velocity final squared, look at that, you've got 10 sevenths times g times the displacement in the parallel direction times the sine of theta. Zero is our initial velocity plus 2 times the acceleration in the parallel direction times delta just in parallel to Everyone bought Delta D parallel to the party. There we go. <laughs> Even zero brought Delta D parallel to the party. Therefore, acceleration yeah. equals uh, five sevenths G sine theta. So notice. The acceleration of this object down the incline is only dependent on the angle, the planet you're on, and what else? I, I'm good. And the moment of inertia, the shape of the object. Notice it only, it only has to do with the shape of the object, not the actual values for mass and radius, but just the shape of the object because the two-fifths mr squared determined what, determined what fraction we got. So notice that it's only the shape, the angle, and the planet that you're on that determined this acceleration.